one of the things I wanted to ask you on a more personal level, I mean, you and I are similar in that we've both written books about value and, and they're both, I suppose, in the self-help genre with some detours into philosophy and psychology. I found this very difficult, the consequences of this very difficult in some sense. It saddened me terribly because so many people have talked to me about how mixed up their lives were and how the words of encouragement that I've offered have helped them put their lives together. And that's a very positive thing and on the one hand because I can I can be pleased that my work has been helpful, but it's also very painful, on the other hand, to get a real glimpse into how much of a longing there is out there for guidance of any sort and how much yeah. how much of a lack there is of that. And that's been very hard on me to see that over and over and over and over. And I don't know if you've experienced anything like that delving into the same realm. Yeah, it's it can be heartbreaking at times. Um, I, I, I very consciously kind of manage my exposure to it. How do you do that? I schedule reader email, essentially. And I, it, it's, I have an assistant who kind of screens everything, gets rid of the trolls and the hate mail and the spam and stuff like that. Um, so I have a folder that it's pretty, that, that she moves certain emails into. And it's, when I open that folder, I know that I'm going to get pretty personal and heavy stuff. It's not all negative. Sometimes it's great life-changing stuff. And so there's like a, there's a mix there. Um, yeah, well, it's generally positive. The, the stories that yeah, yeah see, most I'm of the time. often yeah. stopped on the street. And so that's a, yeah. it's not as easy a encounter to control. And I mean, I'm not complaining about it because people who stop me on the street are almost invariably polite beyond belief. And I've had very, yeah. very few negative interactions, but that doesn't mean it isn't heartbreaking because people reveal the cataclysmic conditions of their life very rapidly you know, in a very intimate way. And you need a burqa. <laughs> <laughs> I'd solve that problem real fast. <laughs> Can you imagine the headlines? <laughs> <laughs> Jordan Peterson, where's a burka? <laughs> yeah, well, I try to have the sunglasses from time to time, but that's not as effective a solution. No, it, it's it's um, it can be heartbreaking, and and it's what well, you know. Sometimes I I I I I don't know what to say. Sometimes, and and a lot of times, I simply respond with. You know, I I'm listening. Um, I don't know what to do in this situation. You know, and, and I, my audience is because you know my listening so much of my audience to do. It it is mm -hmm. it is, but it's you know my my audience is very international, um, and so I you know I'll, I'll get emails from like a girl in rural India who says my parents are making me marry a 50 year old man who I've never met before. I don't know what to do. Should I run away? And I'm like. You know, but, and I, it's, I struggle with that. Like, how do you even respond to that? Um, and so there, there's a lot and the, it, I mean, it can, it can go to pretty dark places. Um, and so, yeah, I just kind of, I, I set out, set aside a certain time of my week. Um, I'm, I, I'm definitely not as recognizable as you. I don't get stopped on the street. I, I don't do many live events, so I don't get it as much in person. Um, but in terms of like the emails and stuff, I, I've just kind of learned to kind of, you know, all right, Sunday afternoon is for these few hours, like that's where I'm going to dive into this emotional space. Yeah, that's intense.